Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now today I wanted to take you on a quick walkthrough through one of my favorite aquariums, and it's one that you've actually never seen before. It is my 16.5 gallon freshwater planted aquarium. As I said, it's a tank I've never shown before, but it's one of my favorites, so I thought why not today walk you through the entire aquarium. Top to bottom, lighting to substrate, filtration, and everything in between. I'm gonna have links in the description to everything I talk about here, so if you have questions about the tank, the light, the canister filter, the driftwood I use, it's all gonna be in the description, so you can check it out whenever you want. Without further ado though, here is the aquarium. So this is a tropical planted aquarium, and the tank itself is probably where we should start. This is a Landon 16.5 gallon cube. It is 15.8 inches in all directions. It is a cube aquarium. It's rimless, which was kind of a challenge I had in the beginning with fish jumping out, but the aesthetic is beautiful. I love this tank. The glass is super clear. There's no tint to it. And it also included a self-leveling mat on the bottom, which really drew me to this tank. I've been super happy with this aquarium, no leaks or anything, and I love the cube style. Now, as I mentioned, this tank was rimless, but I personally needed a lid. I had some fish jump out. So this lid right here is a custom lid. It's actually the glass from a picture frame. I think it was like a 16 by 11 picture frame or something like that. And I just got some aquarium lid clips and did a makeshift rimless aquarium lid. I think it looks great on this tank and it lets a lot of light through, which is important for all the plants that are in here, which leads us right into the light. So this light is a Nikru plant LED light. It's a very budget friendly light, which is why I like it. It's very inexpensive. I believe this is the 12 inch model and it includes a built in remote controller, which was something I really liked. I have it set up just for a standard 10 hour light cycle and it's been doing great for my plants. As you can see, it's a bare bones light. You can adjust the white spectrum and the blue spectrum fairly easily from the remote. And I have it running at I think 100% on both. Luckily for heating in this aquarium, the fish that are in here are fine with just about room temperature. However, I do have a 100 watt Aquion preset heater in here just as a backup in case the tank does dip a little low. Super simple heater. I love these heaters. They're small, compact, and very easy to hide. The background in this aquarium was not included. It's actually a piece of black poster board that I got from the Dollar Tree, simply cut to fit. I love rimless aquariums, but I didn't want to see the hoses and cords behind the tank. I think it ruins the aesthetic. So that black background is, in my opinion, totally a necessity, and it's like a dollar, so I don't know why you wouldn't go for it. Now, for the filtration on this unit, I opted for a canister filter. Rimless aquariums are so seamless, I didn't want to see any equipment hanging on the back, which is why I went canister. I have the intake and outtake hidden behind a large piece of driftwood, and you really wouldn't even know this tank has a filter on it. It's the Marineland C220 canister filter. I have it running at about 75% flow just because it's rated for like a 55 gallon tank, but it keeps the water in this tank crystal clear. It's ultra quiet, which with a tank like this was what I wanted. And best of all, it's seamless. You don't even know it's there. Now we can really start to get into some of the good stuff on this tank, which is our fish, our rock, our driftwood, stuff like that. And of course our plants because this tank is like a jungle. So I have a couple pieces of land and driftwood in there. It's just simple dragon wood. It's really nothing fancy. It did release a ton of tannins. Um, so if you do buy driftwood, I would recommend soaking it first. But I just went ahead and did a little scape with some driftwood in here and then put the plants in. And as you can see, there's no driftwood left anymore. It's pretty much all hidden by the plants, which is the goal I was going for with this tank. It's very natural. It's very jungle-esque, which is why I like it. Uh, just for reference real quick, down at the bottom is just simple river rock, also from Landon. Just a bare base aquarium gravel, nothing fancy at all. I went with neutral tones because I wanted the fish and the plants to really pop in here. Now as for the plants, we have a ton going on in here. We have some Anubius Nana, we have some larger Anubius, we have some Jungle Val, we have some Java Fern, and a couple different type of crypts. Now I chose to keep this a very simple, low light tank. I don't dose fertilizers. I don't dose CO2, nothing crazy like that, because low maintenance is something I look for in an aquarium, and that's why I love this tank so much. It's so low maintenance. So really, these plants were set it and forget it. They grew extremely fast, and that's what I look for in plants. All the plants I just listed are super beginner friendly, super easy to grow, and super low light, which is why I opted for them in this aquarium. Now we can get into the fun stuff, which are the fish that are in here. There's also a couple mystery snails in here, but you can't really see them right now, so. Oh well. The biggest fish in here is going to be my Blackmore Goldfish. 
This guy was like a dollar at PetSmart and he was a little too small to go into my koi pond at the time, which is going to be where he's going to move shortly once he gets a little bigger. Um, but for now, he's killing it in this planted aquarium. He doesn't eat the plants, he doesn't eat the other fish, he's really harmless, and he's pretty cool. Black fish against the green plants. It's a cool color contrast. The rest of these fish are all live bearers. There's some platies, some mollies, and some swordtails that have kind of created their own little ecosystem within this tank. Because it is so densely populated with plants, there's so many little spots for the baby fish to hide. So if you look around, you'll see quite a few baby fish, quite a few juveniles, and quite a few adult fish. There's some black mollies, some gold dust mollies, and a couple different types of platies all mingling around here. That's one of the things I love about freshwater community tanks is the variety of fish you can get, and being able to have baby fish kind of just appear in your aquarium one day is always super cool. But that's pretty much it for the quick walkthrough of my 16.5 gallon freshwater aquarium. I hope you enjoyed taking a little look into this tank. I know it's a lot at first because it's just so densely populated, but these cube tanks are super cool and you can really do so much with them, which is why when I was getting another freshwater tank, I had to go with the cube. That is gonna be it for this video though. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna see anything else, let me know in the comments down below and I will catch you in the next one.